So when someone says testing in production, I guess the natural reaction would be okay. So you're gonna run tests in production. That's pretty self-explanatory. But the question is, what kind of tests are we talking about here? If you're thinking we will just run the same unit and integration and the end-to-end tests against production, then that's not it. That's not what we mean by testing in production, and it wouldn't add much value to repeat the same tests that you've already run in the lower environments. And instead, we would like to test our changes using live user traffic in the real production environment. Not in some controlled environment where we control the throughput and behavior of the user. No, this is real production. So users are gonna do what users do, which is to constantly surprise us with how they use our application. And a common technique for testing in production safely is to use canary deployment, where you deploy the new version of your code side by side with the existing version. And have some sort of traffic splitting mechanism to direct a percentage of the user requests to this new version, and we'll keep an eye on the metrics and alerts, and make sure that this new version is working properly. And after some time, after we've gained enough confidence from running 10% of the traffic through this new version, we will direct 100% of the traffic to this new version, and it becomes a current. De facto version of our application, but if something went wrong and、uh, we suddenly see a spike in errors or latency, then we are going to abort and、uh, take this new version offline and、uh, go back and、uh, figure out what went wrong and why didn't we catch whatever the problem was earlier in our automated tests. But since we only ran ten percent of the traffic to this new version. So we were able to identify the problem and minimize the blast radius it had on our users in production, and this is just one of the ways we can test our application in production in a safe and controlled manner. And then the common approach is to use feature flags, so that in our code we will have if-else branches that we execute different versions of our business logic, depending on if a feature flag is enabled for a user or for a particular request. Using tools such as LaunchDarkly, you can control feature flags that can target specific users or target users by demographic and use weighting as well. So, for example, you may say enable the feature flag on just 10% of the users in the Netherlands, or enable the feature flag for users on the free plan, so that you can protect your paid users. And there's also traffic shadowing as well, where Again, you will deploy the new version of your code side by side with the current version, but instead of directing a percentage of the real user traffic to this new version, you will instead clone the user traffic and run them against this new version and see if you pick up any abnormal behaviors. All these different approaches go beyond the traditional means of testing our application using automated tests that are executed against a controlled environment. And actually test our application using real user traffic, but doing so in a controlled and a safe manner, so that we can minimize the disruption to our user experience. It's important to say that these tests that you run in production, they don't replace your existing automated tests, but they complement them. Because in a complex system, it's impossible for you to think of all the possible ways your application can fail. And there are a lot of different things you can do beyond those automated tests that you run before you deploy to production. And Cindy Sriharan, one of the leading voices about testing in production, has an excellent article about the different phases of the release process and what sort of tests you can do at each phase. The link to the article is in the description below. And you'll notice a few things on here which you may have heard about before. Like load tests and the chaos testing, and even things like tracing and monitoring shows up here as well. Even though we might not think of this as "quote unquote" testing, because observability is a big part of finding out if something is wrong and understanding why and how we can fix the problem. But that seems like a lot of effort, and a good question is why go through all that trouble? 
why is our comprehensive suite of tests not enough? Especially since infrastructure as code is meant to ensure that all of our environments are exactly the same, so running a test in staging should be exactly the same as running a test in production, right? But production is different, it's special. Even if you have all the same resources and the same resource configurations in staging, and the many would consider that to be production-like, it's still not the same because production is where the real users are, and the real users are not going to behave in exactly the same way as your tests. We can take our best guess, but users would always surprise you. And many problems only show up when you are running at a certain scale. It could be the size of your database tables, or the number of concurrent user requests, or the number of API calls you're making to some third-party service. And although you can technically replicate the production traffic to another environment, it's never economically feasible to actually do it. I mean, you're talking about doubling the cost of your entire production environment. It just wouldn't make sense. And if you are taking payments, are you going to double charge all of your users by playing those transactions through another environment as well? So no, there is no and has never been and will never be any environment that looks just like production. Only production is production. Test in production or live a lie, as Charity Majors eloquently put it.